Hello, I'm Jacqueline Hellier. Welcome to Fly on the Wall Friday, where I share with you cases from my Love Life clinic to inform and inspire you in your own love life, everything to do with sex life and intimacy. So today's case is the case of the clients who integrated sex into their lives. So the couple who inspired me in today's uh, episode were a young couple who had a long distance relationship for a number of years. And over those years, they found that sex was easy, no effort. But then again, they didn't see each other very often. So there was lots of anticipation. And then when they did see each other, oh, it was fantastic. And they were on holidays. So they had a great sex life. But now, well, not only are they living in the same country, they're living in the same house. And they're finding that sex isn't happening quite as smoothly as it did before. Not surprising, you might think. So. It's the guy in particular, the male partner, who's finding it particularly difficult, feeling under a lot of stress um, and is anxious around it. So he's resisting it and she's getting frustrated and they're finding that more and more they're not even being particularly um, affectionate with each other. Now, they're a great couple. Clearly they love each other very much when they're talking, they're attentive, they talk very freely and easily with each other. Um, and they've been saying they're, they're good at talking about sex. Although when we really bored down into it, they're actually very good at talking negatively about sex, they're very upfront about how things aren't working out for them, but not very good at talking about it in a positive way. So I got them started and often what I do with couples is I get them to face each other and just to explain to their partner what is sex for them. Now, when the female partner did it, she was very much about, well, sex is about connection, it's about enjoyment and feeling good together and strengthening the relationship. When he talked about what sex was, he said, oh, well, he's always thought of sex as being something you do when you're horny and you focus on the intercourse until there's an orgasm. To his credit, when he said that, he was like, hmm, yes, I think I might be missing out on something there. And yes, because he's looking at it in a very performative way. And when you look at sex from this purely performative, that sex is a performance, it's something that you've got to do, it's an effort, you've got to get things right. Well, it creates an awful lot of stress. And this poor guy's under a lot of stress with a busy work life and everything already. So to his credit, he realized that if he could shift it a little bit, he'd be able to see it as something much more mutual, something done much more for pleasure. And he'd actually said that what he loved most in their relationship was how good it felt when they were just hanging out together, when they were having fun together, you know, how he really enjoyed her company, but ah, sex, pressure, ah, stress, right? So I pointed out to him that if he could experience their sexual relating in as positive and, and laid back and kind of chilled way that he enjoyed so much of their other time together, well, how would he feel about that? And he was certainly like, yes, sounds great. How do I do it? And she's like, yes, <laughs> sounds great. How do we do it? Well, I threw it back at them as I do. And he was like, well, do you mean like we go away for weekends together? And I said, well, look, weekends away together, absolutely. Fantastic, no other stress, no distractions. Couples often find it much easier to have really positive, engaged, desirable, satisfying lovemaking when they're away on a weekend together. Terrific. But I said, you know, that's great, but really what we're looking at doing here is helping you integrate sex into your life because at the moment, certainly from his point of view, it was a very exceptionalized thing. There's life, there's all this good stuff, life, 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 oh, sex, something very different. Gotta get into a different sort of space, ah, do sex. And I said, just waiting until you're away on a weekend together is probably not gonna be enough. We need to get it integrated fully into your life. And I said to them, think of it, you know, they're a very healthy couple, they focus on their health and, you know, they're, they're focused on their wealth, they're, you know, 30-ish, so they're looking at their future and I said, yeah, and you focus on, you know, your finances and your wealth and so forth. And I'm like, yes, 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 yes. And I said, you make time to go swimming, you pay attention to what you're eating, you make time to go shopping and buy the right things and, you know, the same with your wealth, you, you pay attention to 
what you're bringing in, what your goals are, how you spend it. Right? It's part of life. It's integrated. You need to do the same thing with your sex life. So yes, while weekends away, fantastic. Let's you know, notch it down a little bit. So for instance, having time away, doing cool things together, you know, like going on date days, date nights, dinners, shows, bushwalking together, or whatever your thing is. Like having this quality time where you can feel really good together. That's fantastic. Then every day you've got to find some time where you can just chill together. You know, sit on the balcony, glass of wine, have a chat about life, not just watching telly, not on your phones, just there, yeah, you and me. It's so important for couples to find time. And I say every day, right? Some people say, oh, I'm too busy. And I'm like, what, how many hours of Netflix do you watch every day? You know, how, how much time do you spend on your phone? Don't tell me you don't have time to sit down and have a cup of tea or a glass of wine with your beloved. So that's a really important thing. And then I said, so importantly, is what we call the micro connections. Um, I call them relationship vitamins. They're all these tiny little things that you don't even need to think about much, but when they're in your life, it just makes it so much better. You know, frequent little touches, little positive comments, being a little romantic, being a little flirty, all of these things, you know, hey, you're sharing this delicious like, oh, darling, it's you feeling, which heats you up. You go up the thermostat, if you've heard me talk about the thermostat of connection, so that you're much closer to the simmer zone. You know, as a couple, you're feeling good about each other and it's great. And so it's much easier to get a little bit more genital if that's what you're feeling like. But what's most important is you're getting on and it, there's this sort of loveliness between you and it's like, oh, so a little bit of a kiss, a makeout session, would you like to join me in the bath? Or just like, let's get naked and feel skin on skin. And most importantly, as I'm always stressing, is to have this non-linear approach. So just because you have a kiss or you get naked or you're in the bath doesn't mean you have to get genital. And even if you get genital, doesn't mean you've got to go until he ejaculates or whatever, right? It's just, what are we feeling now? What are we co-creating now? And so when they looked at their lives, they were able to sort of see not just different ways they could connect, but also, also different ways that they could actually get sexual. So even though he had been quite focused on you've got to be horny um, and often he didn't feel horny because she'd be like, how about sex? And he'd be like, oh, I'm not horny. He did admit that sometimes he was horny, like he was in the mood, but it tended to be during the day and they're both working. They're both working from home. So he didn't want to interrupt her or intrude on her space. And she was very much, I'm like, ask her, ask her how she'd feel about that. She was like, yeah, let me know won't always be in the mood, but certainly let me know and, you know, see if we can take it from there. So there's a good chance that they'll be able to find some time like that. They also acknowledge that because they are working from home, they've got a lot more time in the mornings. So maybe they could just linger in bed a little longer in some mornings and potentially enjoy some nice genital connection, or at least just connection. And the other thing is we were also talking about, as I've talked about in other other um, talks with you, creating the time and the space, just as they create time to go swimming, or just as they create time to go to the movies, or just as they create time to sit down and look at their finances, <laughs> they need to create time to come together, regardless of how aroused or how horny they're feeling, and just enjoy each other's company, and quite possibly, kind of get in the mood through doing nice things where they actually do want to get genital. And certainly they were talking about on the weekend, whether that was maybe a lion on a Sunday or a bit of a time together before they go, go out on a Saturday, like having sex before you go out, <laughs> so much more sensible than when you get home, right? Um, or even don't have sex at all and wait till the next morning. So, this, they're a fantastic couple, took this all on board. So obviously they've just started. Um, so I can't say that they're a success story yet, but look, I have seen so many couples like this too, who, couples who love each other, who do desire each other, who just can't quite make sense of the sex thing and who really are doing this exceptionalizing it. You know, life and then, oh, sex, ah, uh, how do we make the leap from there to there? And so by thinking of it as something that needs to be integrated into life, to talk about it, to find the spaces, to find the times, to really understand 
you know, what could work, what might not work, and keep focusing. Keep cultivating, as I always say, you have to cultivate a good love life. And like that couple, well, there's a long life ahead of them and it's going to be full of love. So there you go. The case of the couple who integrated or are in the process of integrating sex into their lives. Thanks for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you again and another edition of Fly on the Wall Friday.